So this is the uh, video on how to install the AC Industries ba uh, disc brake kit for your van. Um, I've already got them on here, but I just was going to put this little intro in here. But uh, if you have not purchased them already, um, I would highly recommend that you call Eddie and Dave's Garage. Talk to Eddie. Um, he's the owner. And he, uh, for anybody who mentions that they've called through or whatever that they're on Mike F channel, subscribers or guys just watching the video, um, he's going to give you guys a special price. It's so cheap, he cannot put it on the internet. Um, he can't tell you how much, we, I can't even tell you how much it is in advance, but I will tell you it is probably the cheapest and best uh, disc brake system that you can get for the money. I mean, there's no doubt that, that, that it's going to be a special deal for you guys. Um, and I don't, just so you know, again, I put this in the other video, but uh, I'm just going to put it in this one too as well. I do not get any part of that. I do that for you guys. So for my subscribers and people who watch my videos, um, I'm doing this for you. I don't get any free parts from them. I don't get free parts from anybody. You know, I get sometimes I get a special discount on something, but I do not ask any vendors to give me free parts to put on videos. And uh, I, I do that because I want to be uh, honest about the parts. And I want to support the industry, the Volkswagen parts industry, because, uh, you know, it, it is a, it's a very, very small knit group. And, you know, there's only a few people that are making a ton of money. And most people aren't making that much doing this stuff. So anyway, Eddie and Dave's Garage, call him. Do not call, go on his website and try and look up a deal. You're not going to get the same deal. You're going to get the better deal by calling him and telling him, hey, man, I was watching Mike F channel and... I saw these, you know, saw about this install and these disc, brake, disc brakes, and I, you know, what are we talking? And you know, like if you're local, he might give you a better price, even than if you uh, have to ship it because they are for pretty heavy. So anyway, uh, I'll talk to you guys. Uh, keep keep watching and uh, enjoy the install on this. Uh, I'm gonna have a, a test drive on a separate video. Unfortunately, I won't be able to put it on the same one. It's just gonna be too long if I do that. But I I can guarantee you this that they will stop way better than the uh than the uh, actual uh drum brakes do it's just if you did, haven't haven't watched that yet i have another video out on that on uh explaining how drum brakes are, are are not as good as disc brakes and why so that you can uh you know understand the difference and why that they're so much better it's just basically a lot of leverage so anyway keep watching so we do already have the old drums off um, I'm assuming that you guys know that there's a left hand and right hand thread on these when you go to take them off. Just keep that in mind when you go to take these nuts off. Um, so basically all we've done is just remove the drums, take off the double nut in the front, and taking these four bolts off right here. So we're going to go ahead and continue this, um, showing you guys how to install the disc brake kit. So we're going to go ahead and, first of all, going to go ahead and remove the brake hoses. Uh, well, actually, we may assemble it first. I'm not sure because I don't like the brake fluid dripping. So sometimes what I'll do is just wait till the very end and then I'll disconnect the brake line, put the new brake line on so we don't have brake fluid all over the ground while we're trying to work. Well, the first thing I like to do is get a clean table and lay out my parts. So that we got everything done, so we went ahead and put the master reservoir on. So according to directions, um, you know, if you use a dual reservoir master, typically they have two stop switches, okay? And because this is a 64 to 66, and you don't already have two to two stop switches, what you're going to do is you're going to uh, eliminate one of those with the front brake line. So if you can see here, the left front brake here goes to this one and the rear goes to here and then you've got your stop switch going to here and your right front goes to here so on your later models um, you should be hooking it up a little bit different you're gonna have you know two stop switches um, so you have to 
just there's a little diagram that comes with it to show you how to do that. It's really easy, really simple. Here's the late model. Uh, you want to get these out and just make sure you get that right. So yeah, we'll get our parts all open. And it takes a while just to unpackage everything and lay it all out. I'm gonna clean the cosmoline off the rotors. Yeah, you should have that too. Cause there's... And uh, cause see this stuff right here. That um, is basically to prevent rust from packaging. So you want to use some uh, good brake spray like this, and just spray it on there, and then wipe it right off with a with a paper towel or rag and make sure that you get all that cosmoline off there whatever's between the rotors um, I don't worry about that it can it'll just smell its way off so when you first drive it and you get your brakes hot you're gonna have some smell and that's usually the cosmoline that's between the rotors when you're split rotors like these um, so on your uh, you know bended rotors so I just clean off just basically the surface that uh, that the uh, brake shoes or brake pads are rubbing against and that's it always on your brake shoes or pads you always clean the cosmoline off all right so to prevent uh, damage to your bearings and races you can do this with a socket um, but it's really nice to have one of these little setups here and uh, what it does is basically your bearing race goes on here like that or anyway you get the idea you just put it in there like this and you put your bearing race in there and uh, you can knock it into place and it's got the right size opening for each bearing so um, I always use this tool to put them in you can use a socket um, but you got to really watch you know I mean the chances of you actually damaging this is pretty low because this is like hardened steel but you don't you don't want your socket to be on the race itself you want it to be on the edge so this works perfect this is from Harbor Freight they're I don't know 15 20 bucks mm -hmm. all right so when you do your bearings you see how he's pushing the grease in between in the bearing I'll just show you you can watch that for a second and you see it work its way all the way through so where it's coming through both the other side of the bearing that's how you pack a bearing you don't just throw a bunch of grease on it and go oh, wow it finds its way in there you want to pack it so that the bearing inside right here inside between here is full of grease between so you push it all the way through until it's coming through this hand by using the palm of your hand that's what I've always done done that for years you can have a bearing greasing tool they have those as well but uh, you really don't need something like that you can just you push the Push the grease all the way through where those little rollers are all the way through so that it squeezes out this side all right so I always use this end even though I I'm not sure I think this end here is actually designed to go in the bearing race but it never seems to fit properly and the chances of the aluminum damaging it are really almost nil um, so but anyway you want to knock it in make sure it's even I've not cleaned the Cosmoline off these yet. I will though. The reason I like to use these tools versus just, you can use a hammer and socket. You can, some guys use a punch. I don't like using a punch because you'll find a spot where you didn't hit it in evenly. So you want to race all the way in like that and then check it from the other side and make sure there's no gap in there it should be all the way in solid sometimes the castings are off you check the gap let's do the other side all right i figure i better since i got the tool set up i'll do both the same yeah it's just, it's just pushing it in there evenly and i make sure it's all the way in tight Switch it over to the other one. So the race is up there. See this doesn't it doesn't quite fit the same paper. So you gotta use it this way. If you use it the other way, it'll probably give you problems. 
and then make sure it's if you look at it real carefully and make sure it's straight up and down. Start slow. I always use a big hammer. The bigger hammer always helps more when you're doing front end work. You actually end up doing less damage because what happens is you're swinging that other hammer too hard and then you have less control. So. That's it for the races. They're all down tight. I can feel it. Because if you make them, if you don't get them all the way down tight, what will happen is you'll start driving the car and your wheel bearing will come loose. So you got to recheck them really good. So I like them when they put them in in the factory because usually they're, they have a good machine that just drops them in real tight. But not with this kit. All right, so we'll clean off the Cosmoline here. All right, so now the Cosmoline's all cleaned off the rotors. We're gonna flip them this way and go ahead and install our inner, inner outer bearings, or inner bearings first, and then put the seals in. So anyway, we're putting a little bit of grease inside like that. We kind of just work it around and then work it around like that. Some guys just load the thing full of grease. That's really not the way to do it. It's a waste of grease. Um, and what happens is, is sometimes if the seal goes out, then the grease just ends up all over the place. It just, you really don't need that much grease. A lot of people, you know, that's why the brand new cars don't have a big, huge gob of grease on there. I usually will take my finger here and I'll go like this too, right before I put the seal on. Because this is the area, the surface area right here is where your grease needs to be. Not all over the place. Um, it's right in this area, you know, on the inner and outer bearing. That's the critical area. Putting it all over in the inside really isn't that critical. I mean, some guys do it, but that's not the way that I do it. Another very critical mistake made by so many people. You need to use high temp disc brake wheel bearing grease. Do not use anything else I even only use this I use this on all my wheel bearings I do not use anything other than high temp the high temp if I can even get it to focus high temp wheel, wheel bearing brace don't use anything else guys you know they have this at O'Reilly's another little thing I was going to throw in here if you go to O'Reilly Auto Parts and you're let's say you have any kind of business I don't care what you do maybe you have a YouTube business maybe you have a any kind of business um, you can go into O'Reilly Auto Parts and you can set up a commercial account. You just tell them you have a fleet of vehicles and they'll set up in a commercial account. You'll get special pricing and you can buy this stuff like brake stuff, the grease stuff, all that stuff in volume. You buy it by the case and you get it for half the price. You'll get a discount on your parts. You just have to go into O'Reilly and tell them you'd like to set up a commercial account. Tell them you have a fleet of vehicles for your business. Whatever your business is, you know, make a business card. You know, all of a sudden, raise your right hand, say I'm a business. Go in there and and set it up. I have a commercial account because I do. Ha I actually do have a fleet of vehicles. But you know, it's you know, what's a fleet of vehicles? How many cars is a fleet? You know, do you have two, three? You know, just be creative. Anyway, but you can set that up and then start getting some pricing over there. Yeah, I have a fleet, but I do actually have a pretty large amount of vehicles so that's you know there but that's just a little trick there guys you, you can get discounts all over the place if you just get creative so set your seals on there um, you can use as long as it's larger than the one that's there um, this is a little bit too small you get a bigger one How about the red one you just want it or the blue one uh, you just want it on there so that you hit it on evenly you don't need to use this tool. You can actually just use a hammer to put these in if you're really careful. But it does help to have the right tool. All right, see how that just goes down perfectly even? There we go. So it's nice and clean if you can see that. Um, 
Then what you do is you always take your finger and you just kind of rub it around once. Get a little bit of grease on the seal and then wipe the outer edge of your seal clean and you're ready to go with your disc brake. So since this was sitting for a few days, we went ahead and cleaned the spindles. Um, if you just barely just took them off and there's clean grease on there, there's no, you know, you didn't have bad bearings or something like that, you can even just leave the grease there. Um, you want to check your spindles condition and make sure that the bearing was not spinning. Uh, this one here I know wasn't because I drove it for a long time before I changed the brakes. But you want to look, you know, these are fine. You know, if you can see that's got some wear, but it you can see it doesn't have like file marks where somebody's like knocked off junk on there. You know, that's when you've got a problem. You know, when your spindle's got file marks on it and it looks like somebody's made it themselves, you better not put a bearing on that spindle. Yeah, then here, this one's nice and clean. You know, it, it it can be somewhat, you can see there's been a little bit of damage on there. You can run your finger all across, it's okay. Sometimes you can get just a little bit of sandpaper and clean them up if they're just barely bad. But like I said, if it looks like it's spun like hell and there's grooves all in there and everything else, you need to replace the spindle. So then again, next thing you want to do is select the correct plate. There's, I think they're right and left. Is there on this one or no? Are they they're both the same? the same. Yeah, they're both the same. They're, they're, you can flip them over. That's cool. Actually, some of them have a right and a left, um, but this one has the same for both. And we'll go ahead and bolt those on. Uh, I don't have a torque specification for these, but um, I'm going to say pretty damn tight. Uh, you know, you it, it, it does have star washers on here, so it's up to you if you want to use some Loctite. I don't usually. Um, there's not in particular ones that you need Loctite on, but probably 25 pounds or something like that would be fine. Yeah, this is about what we do. I just want to do like a lug nut, pretty much. Small lug nut. Typically, I always check them by hand, too, so we're going to do that just so you guys see. You want to feel how tight it is. You want it to be right at that part where the bolt, just before the bolt stretches. You see how he's just feeling it. That's how we do it. I don't, I, I don't use torque wrenches because I just know. What I do is but, I, I tighten one up till it breaks and I back the other ones off half a turn. Yeah, see, there you go. That's a good way. <laughs> yeah, right. Don't listen to that. Just do it the right way. Tighten them up accordingly. You know, if you go, like I say, 25 pounds or so, 30 pounds, somewhere in there, I'm not sure what the spec is, but somewhere in there is going to be about right. But I, I just know by feel. That's how I do it. And put the other side on real quick, just like that. Just throw your bolts in there. They have star washers, like I said, that's going to keep it from coming out. It's like a lock washer. So star washers are flatter. That's probably why they use those. Um, if you want to use Loctite, go ahead. Um, I, I just don't. Uh, not on these. I don't think I need to. So go ahead and carefully put your drums on sometime, or your rotors on. Sometimes you'll have time where it gives you a little bit of resistance. If you kind of hit with both hands evenly on both sides of the drum or rotor, that usually will knock it on. If it doesn't, sometimes you have to get a little sanding. I've had to do both with brand new bearings. Um, so sometimes you're going to have to just sand it, spin a little bit, but that one went right on. All right, so you make sure you put on your thrust washer and then both nuts and the uh, the uh, little, uh, what is it, lock plate. Driver's side's always left-hand thread, guys. So if you're wondering, they are different. If you didn't have those nuts or something, driver's side turns to the left. Passenger side turns to the right. All right, so I'm going to show you guys how I usually tighten up the bearing, especially with disc brakes. It's a lot easier to do. I usually will just use a pair of pliers because that's usually what I have on most cars. And then, yeah, it's weird being like my thread. I'm not used to that. So I'll spin it and then see it start to have a little bit of resistance like that, just a little bit. That's where you want it. That's how I've done it for years. Um, a lot of guys will over tighten that, um, and, and some people will make them too loose. But I've always just spun them until they have a little bit of resistance, and then that's it. Right. Yeah, some, some guys used to run their wheel bearings a little bit looser than what I did. And whenever I drive them around the block and I take them to the alignment rack, back when I was a mechanic, um, the, the alignment guy would lift it up and he'd go, hey, the wheel bearings are loose. So 
it they if you drive it just a little bit they they kind of wear themselves in so but anyway you adjust the wheel bearings however you want um do it at your own risk so you got the double nuts on here the crush washer um stupid thing i don't know why it does that okay and then you got this thing here crimped down on both sides like that so you're ready for your I always pull this out really good why it doesn't auto focus right now but uh, I pull this out really good and then I'll put the uh, dust cap on that way it's easier to line up so you line up your dust cap when it's like that and then when you pop it all the way on you go ahead and put your keeper on that's the way I usually do it. Knock it on real quick. Chris likes those small hammers. I like big ones. All right, so now that your cap's on, then you can go ahead and put your keeper in. But just don't push on that thing. I usually just leave it just like that, and then I'll just put the keeper on it. I don't know where it is. There's a little trick. If you don't have an E-clip, and you have one of these little straight straight connector, electrical connector like this, you just cut the end off of it and you can put it on here and crimp it down. It stays on really good. It's probably actually better than the E-clip. I've had the E-clips actually fall off. If you, if you notice in your kit, it has uh, studs here and nuts. It's up to you, but uh, you know, I think the reason that they put those in there is because these rotors are not as hard as steel as what they should be maybe. And uh, so we're going to go ahead and run the uh, stud and nut too because we're just a little leery about you, know, you might put your lug bolts in and then strip out and then then what you're going to buy another whole kit you know I don't know if you can even buy the rotors outside of it maybe you can but uh, that seems like a pain all right so we're actually you got to use Loctite when you do this if you're going to put these in the studs in you need to put red Loctite on the stud on the stud and put them in the hole um, so make sure you clean the cosmoline out of the hole too because it that'll affect your your bonding of your uh, red loctite so red loctite red loctite of these going to go ahead and get them in tighten them and then uh we're going to run the lug nuts now you know like i said it's 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 up to you but i think that the reason that they do that is because it's softer so we don't want to find out later so in these, you just want them tightened by hand pretty much, you know, not too tight. doesn't matter, um, really, because the Loctite's going to actually get hold them in place. All right, so I wanted to show you guys this real, real quick. Um, if you see here, the clearance in here is very tight. Uh, if you do have a rubbing issue after you get done, you might have to take them apart real quick and just grind off a little bit out there if you've got any... I mean, it's a 16th and it's really close. So, um, I've had a couple of these cheap Chinese castings on some of the drums and stuff like that where we've had rub issues. So be aware of that. Nothing, nothing in these, in these Chinese Volkswagen kits just is always bolt on. You got to look out for yourself. So if you get start to get a weird noise when you're turning corners, you know, you might want to take it apart and look here and just see if that's hitting you know, you can see if there's wear on the end of there. It'll be very, very hard to see, but just a little bit of wear on there would probably be your, that would probably be your rep point. Here's another issue um, here is you notice here, the uh, caliper and rotor, the top of the rotor here um, is really close to the, to the caliper. So again, you might need to clearance that a little bit. Um, they say these are bolt-on, but uh, we're actually having a rub issue right now. It's actually just barely rubbing on there, and that's going to have to be clearanced. So, just so you know. Well, actually, that's the pads. It's not hitting. But man, it is close. We, we don't know. It might be an issue. We're going to check it out really close. So, yeah, it's probably not hitting. It doesn't look like it is from the video. Um, Maybe I'll drop the bus down and look, but um, you might have an issue again with um, a rub problem because th these are set up for 14s. So there's a, not a lot of clearance in there. So um, 
that's why there is potential for this this kind of thing you know they're not going to recommend that this is uh, an issue but um, I'm going to let you guys know that you may have to just do a little bit of grinding in there and clean it up and make sure that uh, it clearances but just don't do too much because you don't want to compromise the uh, the uh, the integrity of of this caliper you know to weaken this up so if you have to do that just take off what you need not too much make sure you know clearance it at least a sixteenth of an inch and that's about it like I said when you get done uh, you might drive it and then you'll see hey when I drive it first there's no noise and then after I get the brakes warm you know now it's starting to make this weird noise and it'll probably clearance itself but um, it's just something you want to be aware of you, you know if, if you go to buy this stuff and you go to put it on you might have you know an issue with that that you have to just correct and it's not a big deal it's just this is normal uh, unfortunately this is normal aftermarket Volkswagen parts 101 you know I, on most most aftermarket parts I buy for VW's I got to do some work to them to make them make them fit and everything if you guys are wondering okay these might work the way they are but you can see right here in the caliper where th all this is is the rotor clearance okay this doesn't do any of the actuation of the pistons or anything like that but if you can see here look at this side it's machined down a little bit further they didn't machine this very good these are the types of things on normal we're used to seeing so we're actually going to take a cutoff wheel or a grinder and just going to and machine that across and finish it out a little bit we're not going to take off very much only maybe a sixteenth of an inch that's about it you know just enough to make sure that we don't have a rub issue after the bus is all warmed up It'd be kind of a drag of them driving it and they get really hot and then all of a sudden you look at this one this one's clearanced both of them are on this one maybe they just missed this miss missed uh machining that or maybe their tooling was a little off who knows it was a variety but yeah just um check that out you know on your bus if you're buying this kit make sure you know do it at your own risk if you have any problem don't come back to me you know this is all you know these are aftermarket parts these are stuff that doesn't even normally fit on these things and if um you know it's it's kind of a you know they're not like when you buy a brand new car and have stuff you know that's been engineered by you know 30 people in a room and you know this is all stuff that's somebody actually you know cast it up and had made and then took to china and you know is selling it that's that's normal when you're talking about aftermarket parts for uh most most you know old cars that you're trying to update so this is our after we ended up just using the porting tool just kind of did a little clean up just basically took the edge off that was right here that was kind of you know we felt like it was going to hit you know after it's warmed up so that ended up being all there was all we had to do is just do a little bit of clearancing right there just right here um where we looked you know so these are all the types of things when you bolt this on stop look and make sure that the castings aren't you know were already clearanced and and that it's going to fit you know don't just bolt it on and figure oh man these idiots did this and that it's up to you 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 need to be you know the person that's proactive and look at things really that's the way all my vw's i do everything that i buy every part i buy i make sure that it fits and usually have to do some machine work to them so on these here um, when you put these on make sure uh you know that these are two different parts here if you see these these come loose and uh, you need to make sure that it's tight on both surfaces. Don't just figure it's all, you know, one. So you got these are our universal hose, and then they put these fittings on there. So maybe it's actually a better quality hose. Who knows? Maybe not. So go ahead and hook up your hose here. Remember, there's a right and left on the bleeders. The the one that's at the top should be the one that you're doing your bleeding on on each side. So these are actually this side you won't be bleeding out of. It's only just the top one. So pull off your old brake hoses and uh, go ahead and put the new ones on. I don't know if I need to explain anything on that. Make sure you put the make sure you have these on there, the little keeper. It's really important. All that stuff matters. So at this point, we're going ahead and removing, installing the brake hoses. Um, that way, we don't have our fluid leaking all over. 
uh, especially if your fluid's clean. And then make sure you use a wrench on the top and bottom when you do that to tighten them up. So another thing I see some guys do is they'll have this brake line kind of twisted. Make sure that it's when it is in a it is not twisted at all. See how that just goes nice and even. Now I did notice that these brake hoses seem kind of short. I mean, but they'll be okay. I don't think they'll be a problem. As your suspension, you know, with the suspension, if you have like lowered car or you have trying to raise your bus up, you're if you're trying, you know, if you're trying to raise it off road. You're probably going to have a problem with these brake hoses just so you know if you're if you're, if you're see we're on the stops right now we have the original stops like if you didn't have your stops or something like that um i'm noticing these brake hoses are pretty tight i mean so keep that in mind if you're going to raise your car you're probably going to need different brake hoses yeah for a stock bus it shouldn't be a problem uh it's just you, you guys are going to do this off-road thing or some weird thing like that you're gonna to want to rethink, you gotta re-engineer everything. Whenever you do something that's not original, you're gonna to have to be the engineer and you better make sure you do your homework and make sure all your stuff's right. Um, fortunately, I don't usually do that. I try to keep stock. If you keep it stock, it should be fine uh, with the brake hose that's on it. But if you're doing anything like, if you're not running stops, you start to cut these things off, you know, doing something like that where it can, even if it's lowered, let's say you lowered it and you cut your stops all the way off, and you go over something where your arm goes past the normal length, you could break your brake hoses off. It's just something to think about. So basically the procedure is basically the same on both sides. Uh, I might just go ahead and uh, cut that part out uh, so that you guys don't have to watch both sides being done. And then we'll show the master cylinder here uh, in another part of the video. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, just leave it at this. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is go ahead and remove the master. You got. Uh, 11 millimeter, or if you don't have that, 716 works fine if you have a, a, a line wrench for that. Um, then we're also gonna, we know that the brake light switch is good, it's on here. Um, otherwise, you can get those on. Hans Auto Parts has the three prong ones, very cheap. I forget what the price is. You have to check them out. Uh, I usually get like them in bulk, I'll get like 10 of them at a time. Um, and they're, uh, they're out of like South Carolina or something like that. So I'll just use my good old pliers. Wrong tool, but that's what I use. Take that off. Let's get the old master off. All three of the lines are off now. We just gotta get the last two bolts out. They're pretty tight. All right, the master is off, but remember you're gonna need to reset this rod. It's for the new master. See so yeah, how we take the rod and put it in the vise. Usually those are always stuck. So uh, they see how rusty this one is? Uh, that thing's done. Have to put a new one in. So, I mean, if you didn't have one around and you had a bolt this long, you could actually round the end up and make sure you sand it really good so it's smooth so it doesn't wear a hole in the uh, master and because it's on aluminum usually, the piston. So you want to make sure it's sanded really smooth if you're going to do that. When, or you can just buy the rod, it depends you know, where you're at. So then you get your diagram out and uh, I put it the right direction, see how it's gonna go in the bus. Stop, put your stop switch in first so you don't screw that up. And then uh, you'll be hooking up the brake lines accordingly, the way it says in here. It's upside down, but see, this is the right diagram for this. All right, so I'm gonna try just hooking up the brake lines before I put the master in place. That way it's a little bit easier. You can kind of work it around a little bit and then bending them back up. I'll let you know how it works. All right, so back to the disc, to the brake job here. You want right here, you see how there's a little bit of looseness in here, not a lot, just a little tiny bit of looseness in here so that when your pedal's all the way up, uh, your your pistons able to re retract all the way in if it doesn't do that what happens is you'll have problems with your braking not working right so you definitely want a little tiny bit of looseness when it's all the way up all right so we are got the master in got the boot on we we're just doing a test fit on there I just wanted to stop and show you that um, right there we got the uh, the little clip on there 
everything's good to go all these are all tight I'm gonna go ahead and drop this down and fill it up with fluid and bleed the brakes up sometimes you can actually bench bleed the master but uh, we're gonna go ahead and bleed it while it's in the car because it's a lot easier on a VW to do it that way I don't know if you've ever bench bleed the master um, I don't know I'm not gonna put that in the video here but I'm just letting you know that that can be done if you guys want to do that so he's actually pulling down the brake pedal right now and pumping it up about three times and then loosening up the lines that are going into the master as the what the brake did will depress. So you pump it up and hold it down and then uh, loosen the line up and then retighten the line until only fluid comes out and you don't hear the air crackle. So that's how you do it. All right, so I'm pumping it up up here. I'm gonna hold it down like that. He's loosening the bleeder. Get ready. I give him like three more, and then hold it while he's loosening the bleeder, and then retightening it. Pump it up. He loosens the bleeder. Retighten. There's a lot of air because you got, you know, new. There we go. And you can start in the front, the rear, the back. I mean, the old school way is to start at the furthest away from the master cylinder and then work your way to the front. But I've done it all different ways, any wheel, and it's always worked. But so the, the, the right way technically is to start in the furthest away from the master and then work your way to the front. All right, so one of the things you need to do when you do your brakes and you change your, your front brakes, you should be checking your rear. I know mine are in good shape, um, but you also should uh, adjust them if nothing else. So the we want to adjust them back up so that they're fully tight so that you know when you're all done, you should have a really, really high pedal. Um, when you adjust the brakes on these, there's two, there's two sets of adjusters. On the rear, it should be on the top, or on the bottom, right? They're on the bottom? Mm -hmm. On the bottom, you got a star adjuster here on this side and a star adjuster there. Make sure you adjust both of the adjusters. Normally what I do is I'll, you want the adjuster to turn so that, say, this side goes this way, this side goes this way, so that you're pushing the rod outward until your whole wheel stops okay then you back it off either one two or three clicks depending on you know your drum condition you know so if you have a really really straight drum sometimes you can click them just once on each side and that'll be enough um, most of the time it's going to be two clicks or three clicks depending on how your the condition of your drums if you're you know so I've had cars where we did them one click and they were perfect. They still didn't, they were barely touching and uh, that was fine. I've had ones where you had to go three clicks because there's a little bit of warpage in the drum. You know, it just depends. So you do one click, you spin the wheel. If it's got way too much drag, then you go ahead and do two clicks, spin the wheel, see if you have any, see if it shouldn't have hardly any drag in it if, after the brakes are worn in. And then, uh, then, then if it's still really rubbing, sometimes you do three. And then do the other one the same way. So you do one side, you know, one, two, or three clicks, and the other side should be one, two, or three clicks. Sometimes you do them the whole thing twice just to make sure that you get it right. And my bad, I forget the bus. They're actually on the top, not on the bottom. I think the bugs are on the bottom, right? Bugs on the bottom, yeah. I don't know. I just do. I just look in there and find them, and then I know they're on one or the other. I look in the, usually what I'll do is I'll look on the, this side and I'll go oh yeah the wheel cylinders are on the bottom so the adjusters are on the top oh yeah the wheel cylinders are on the top so the adjusters are on the bottom you know they're opposite of the wheel cylinder okay so we're all done all the brakes brakes are all bled out we're gonna call this the end of this video we're gonna do a test drive in it and probably put it in a separate video so take a look for that um, and the guy why guy wanted me to test drive and sh see if the actual distance stopping 
is better with these than, than the other. I mean, I, I, I mean, I actually measuring it and stuff wouldn't be really very accurate to do that. And for sure, 100% of the time, it would be faster with disc brakes than with, uh, with uh, regular drum brakes. Uh, if you if you're if you're interested in that, watch the other video that I just uploaded on uh, uh, what's the difference between. Hey, hose that wheel off real quick right there. See the brake fluid running? It came through the inside on both sides and the back side of the other one. Yeah. But yeah, one of the things is is brake fluid is water soluble, so it's a really good idea just to fuse your hose and and. And neutralize it so it doesn't keep uh, you know wiping out your floors and whatever else you put it on a rag you know the worst thing you could put it on a rag and then uh, and actually leave the rag somewhere and take the paint off of something that'd be really bad so it's a better idea just to hose it down and neutralize it and that's the best way to do it but anyway I'll talk to you guys in the next video please like share and subscribe that's it for the brakes disc brakes how to do them uh, if you want to watch the stopping difference, uh, I'll do a test drive in it a little while. Uh, I don't know if I'll get to that today, but uh, maybe I will. Who knows? I don't know. I got to wash it and then I'll go drive it and stuff. The reason I haven't been driving it is because the master was leaking, so that's why I just didn't want to drive this thing. So, but yeah, we just make sure we hose that all down. All right, I'll talk to you guys in the next Make sure you like, share, subscribe, dislike, uh, leave a comment. Good, bad, thumbs up, thumbs down. I don't care. Just put something down there. We'd love to hear what you have to say. Talk to you in the next video.